Hello, my name's Robert Adams and I'd just like to show you how to get the best out of this trellis ribbon cutter die that we do here for all occasions. And you'll notice when you get it back that it comes in two parts. You've got the main part here, which creates the ribbon, and you've got what we call the ribbon cutter, which you can use in conjunction with this or make strips of ribbon. Now the key thing with this and what makes it so good is that you can make any length of ribbon you want. And I've got one here that in true TV style that I prepared earlier on just to show you that we can actually make the length that we want. So we cut it out first of all with this and then we use the edge cutter here to give us this lovely scalloped edge. And of course the further that we move this away from our initial cut the wider or shallower it is. And of course you could use this just to make uh, little strips of, of ribbon if you wanted to as well. So what I'm going to do is show you how to use this, how to line everything up so you can get a continuous line. And when you do that, you can create, as I said, different styles of cards. Um, and here we can see we've just cut it out of the card and popped it on there. Now if I can show you this one here, you can see where the ribbon cutter's been used to full effect to give us a nice long length there. And um, again, note that you can create different bands of ribbon with this, different widths. And here again is another great example to show you that you can use it to create your borders here, top and bottom, and then to create a length of ribbon um, using just the ribbon cutter itself. And uh, last but not least, losing my bit of ribbon cutter there, let's grab hold of that, just to show you again another example. Now there's lots of examples and all of these will be on the gallery at uh, papercross.co.uk if you want sort of um, a little bit of future reference or some ideas and inspiration have a look there. Okay so that's sort of the background to it. Let's get down to the actual process of cutting with these dies. So what I'm going to do is just use a strip of card and I'm going to create a, a ribbon like this for you, a lovely trellis ribbon. And what I'm going to do is, as I said, get my length of card and uh, prepare with my dies. I'm going to use my Big Shot and I'll just run you through a basic technique to get good results every time. Now I find it easier working upside down. So for those of you that normally have the Big Shot, you'll know that I'm really doing everything in reverse because I'm going to cut down onto what was technically the base plate, but I swapped that round for my top plate and then I'm going to sandwich it the other way. Just because I find it easier to actually um, make the cuts when you're doing all the lining, you can put everything down here when you line everything up rather than having to flip it over. Although we are going to use tape and that would hold it in position. So if your machine only cuts the other way up, then don't worry, just make sure um, that you tape everything down firmly, which you will anyway. But for the sake of this, anyone looking, thinking why to using his big shot upside down, that's the reason why. Okay, so for this first cut, I'm just going to pop the die down. There's no need to tape it at this stage and leave a little bit of space at the end here because I could then have a gap if I want to, uh, a border around the die. So my plate goes on here now and I'll just run this through the machine. And so in order not to stretch the paper too much, I'm just going to do this the once. and pull that away and just take out any few little strays that are in there. There we go. A little tap and that'll all come out. So that's our first cut and you can see that's just straightforward. So the next thing to do is to line up the die with this and there's a couple of methods. What we want to do is lock into that initial trellis. And if I just rest this on my finger, it kind of makes a little bow on the paper like that. And if you pop it along, I don't know if you can see, I can actually feel it locking in. It just catches there onto the existing ones and I can almost push the paper along with it like that. So that's what we're aiming to do, just to lock in. And I can feel that, I think you will as well. It, it just drops back into those trellises there. And if I pop that over, you can see on the camera, that's a perfect match there. So what we're going to do, 
is repeat this process and lock it in. Now you may, if you want to, and you finally got dexterity problems, perhaps balancing it on your finger isn't going to be that easy. Something like this on a cutting mat with a little bit of give, again, I can just feel that locking in and you can see now I can, I can push the whole thing along. It just drops down into those holes. So now that that's anchored in nicely, the next thing to do is just hold it into position. And I'm going to put a little bit of tape near the front here and I've sort of made it detact as much as possible because as it goes through the machine it will push the tape into the paper or card stock rather and uh, try and stick to it. Now I'm also putting a little bit towards this edge because as we go through the machine and we're going to cut this way because as this cuts it just slightly stretches the paper, it's squashing it and stretching it and this way it will match up perfectly here and as it stretches it doesn't matter because it's making a new cut through there and belt and braces I'm just going to check everything looks absolutely fine that side so that's in nicely so we're ready to go back to our machine and the golden rule here is I'm going to turn it round before I start it's always cut from edge to edge so where that ends and you put the new one start your cutting that way Otherwise, if we come from the other end, it's stretched the paper slightly. So by the time it's got here, it might only be half a millimetre out, but it will then cut into your existing border and won't look so nice. So our golden rule is we cut from edge to edge, new cut to old cut, as we feed it through the machine. OK, I'll go back to my trusty cutter. And there we go. We're feeding it in this way. So our existing cuts going through there and the new cut will join it's about two centimetres there and then that'll be a fresh cut as we go along. So it's easier I find doing it upside down. Um, it just means if you do that whole process of sticking it on the plate or near the plate um, then you're fine when it comes to cutting. Although we've got the tape in position uh, as I said you could do it the other way around but I just find it a little bit easier. So reverse plates as it were for here and just pop that one on there. And I'll just to get a slightly nicer cut, move that along. There we go. Pop it in the machine. And we'll just run that through nice and gently. There we go. So now we'll just remove the tape and take off the die. And there we go. We can see, as I said, we've got a lovely continuous length of ribbon here and you could make that any size that you want. So if you want to keep an edge to it, what I would suggest you do is measure the length that you want, and give yourself a couple of mil at the end, and you'll be able to cut that, similar to what I've done here on, on this edge, and then move this as close as you can get to your measurements. So for example, say we wanted it to come you know, roughly say there, when we lock it into position, you'll have you'll feel where it will then begin to lock and you, you try and get as close as you can to give yourself the measurement. So you can, to a certain degree, determine how long this is and keep an edge at the bottom. My thing here is that the longer that this overlaps, the more chance of something cutting or slipping into there. Um, but it's something which you can do. Okie dokie, so the next thing to do is use the top part of our ribbon cutter, which is working with this die here. Now one edge is slightly straighter along the top, you can see from here and the other curly. So that, that is uh, important to note that the straight top is always outwards. That lovely scalloped edge is going to be created doing it like that. So again, what I'm going to do is just pop this in and remember, let me just show you here, come in from the end and however far you move it out is really the width of the ribbon that you're going to create. So in this instance, I'm going to just, let's say, like that. And I've put my tape on here. I've already pre-prepared it, and I just stick that on. And what I'll do now is just run this through my machine. As simple as that. For convenience, I again am cutting what I call upside down on this machine. But it's really just a peculiarity of my big shot here. And I'll feed that through. And in this instance, We'll just go from either end. I'll just go from there, like so. And we can see now, if I just carefully pull this off, 
the reason we have the low tack tape is as it goes through the die cutting machine it does push it down onto the card and you can see there I've got my lovely scalloped edge. So what I'm going to do now is make the next one, remember the straighter edge is always the top and like we've done with, with this, it's what I call locking it in, you push it down and you'll feel it lock into the existing cuts and it kind of, you can feel it there so you just measure by eye to keep that uh, line nice and straight and then again just stick with my tape and it really is just a case of doing it by feel, it locks in, I don't know I just flip that over you can see I've got a couple of their bits there and they've just locked in you can see it in there so that's that's what we're going for so we'll have a nice continuous cut so back to my machine and again because we don't want to stretch this as we go through and the paper will stretch slightly because we're pressing it we go from this end where the joining end first so any stretched movement comes along here and doesn't show up as the cut misaligning so once more, I'll just run that through the machine. And we can see now that's cut beautifully and everything lines up there. So what I need to do now is just go on ahead and cut the, the other side here and I'll do exactly the same thing. So I'll line this up, pop it down with my tape just to hold it into position. And again, just run this through the cutter and then we'll come back and do the second cut into the machine. Just going to put it through the once and again carefully lift this up. And we can see we've got our second cut here, or a third cut, and the same principle goes for this last one. I'm just going to turn that around and again the straighter edge is the outer edge and just pop that on there till I feel it lock in just pressing it down and that will now actually line up with this other one if I think I counted in two two notches in um, you can go further this one um, is a little bit l more forgiving than that if you if with stretch and everything in the paper um, but two is enough for me to feel that's in the right place to so tape it down you could always have a little visual check make sure yep, those bits are in the right place so without too much fuss back to my machine and remember the golden rule is cut joining your last cut there we don't want to go from this other end here because as it cuts it's going to just slightly stretch the paper so by the time it gets down here it's out of alignment if we start from this end um, the stretching process won't really occur we won't notice it as it goes along it's only slight but because we're doing things to be quite honest fairly accurately here um, it would show up possibly so once more through the machine and um, it's an easy cut with this you don't have to with the other one I didn't want too much pressure to squeeze the paper too much just to make my alignment easier that as we can see has worked and now I can cut it to my desired width like so let's just cut that one to there and along and I can just neaten off the corners as well and there we go we've got a lovely piece of ribbon here just smarten that up ready to use in our card making custom made and we can do that any size that we want and we can work out a different width by moving the ribbon cutter further or nearer away from there so we can alter the width of our cuts again if I just bring this card into shot we can see how close you can come to the edge here and um, this again was made out of matte and layered with different different pieces of paper to create a, a lovely look there now you can of course use just the ribbon cutter on its own to create a scalloped ribbon if you want to and to show you that I've very quickly run through this little demonstration so I've stuck that down and I'm just ready to cut now my first cut down carefully peel back the tape 
and again get ready to do the next one just line it up lock it into position and tape it down and then cut this one again remembering to cut from this end joining the end of one cut beginning of another one most important and if I show you here that's already coming away just pull that off and I've got my first long length of, of ribbon here that's the scallop edge is my top edge well, there's nothing to stop you doing a reverse if you want to that's just the way that I've done it and I can make this sort of any width that I want to now so let's do it as a slightly narrower one just about 12 millimeters again just stick my tape on there and run it through the machine again and if I pull this back we can see that's already making a lovely cut and so for the last one again come along just lock that into position you'll feel it by that I just refer that you can feel it dropping back the original cut of overlapping and as I put it in there I can feel it literally popping back into the cut there with the blades and that holds it into position remember we're going to cut from that way so I'll spin it round and just run it through the machine so in it goes from that end through and once more just carefully peel that up off away from there and you can see now I've got my piece of ribbon so I'll just cut this off at the end there and down here And there we go. So I could mat and layer this, make a bigger one in different colours. It really is quite a versatile little part to the die. And of course, um, we need that to create our lovely scalloped edges here. But don't forget, you could cut this and have straight lines if you wanted to. That again is just a, a suggestion, a crafting suggestion for you. There. OK, there we have it. I hope uh, this tutorial has given you an insight into how to use these dies. And uh, I think you have great fun with it and should be able to, as I said, make some lovely cards that you can use to create this lovely trellis edge, which works in uh, accordance with all our other trellis dies as well. It's the same size. Uh, trellis here so it matches with everything there as well. Anyway thank you for watching and enjoy your crafting.